Hi there, my name is Karina Abbott. I'm the founder of Neon Hive, a specialist marketing agency for video games. Um, I'm here to talk to you about social media today. So we're looking specifically at the different types of media, what the strengths of certain platforms are for video games and how you can apply them to your title. So to show you a little bit more about me, I've worked in video game marketing for 13 plus years now at some pretty big companies. And uh, I founded Neon Hive in 2016. We uh, specialize in video games, as I said before, and we work with a variety of developers across the spectrum. So big studios, small studios, solo developers, and we help them with all aspects of marketing and that includes community management. This talk is designed to help you identify the best social media platforms for your game or your company. I'll be looking specifically at the most popular platforms for gamers and we'll give you a snapshot of each type of media and how it could potentially work with your title. You don't have to have a presence in every single title. I'm a big fan of less is more and uh, you'll see that as we go through. But ultimately, social media is the place to talk directly to your consumers. I'll go through the plus and minuses next. But ultimately, um, your social media platforms need to reflect who you are and they will be the last port of call for many gamers before they make a purchasing decision. So it's very important that you pick the right places to talk to the right people. So social media can be good and bad and I think I'll run through some of the perks. Hopefully this isn't too rudimentary, but I think it's important to remind ourselves why we're using social media in the first place. So for the good bits, obviously it humanizes your company and yourselves, especially for smaller developers who aren't necessarily beholden to shareholders. You can put a lot more personality out there. You can show pictures of you eating pizzas in your studio when you're not in lockdown obviously um, you could also talk about things that you care about you can look at charity organizations you can champion various activities within the industry it gives you a direct line to your potential customers so you can talk directly to your customers about your products that you're launching you can get feedback from them you can have fun with them and just general conversations you can learn about them um, find out what they're interested in by looking at your followers and investigating their own channels it's a great research tool it generates partnership opportunities so streamers in particular for games uh, tend to get in touch through social media it's mostly free of cost so some of the platforms may cost some money to grow for example facebook is notorious for making you spend money to get likes um, but typically it's free of cost it's reputation management so again you know if you're having issues with for example your servers on your multiplayer title die um, you may want to message that out there and talk to community and reassure them you can stay on top of industry news which is very important for PR potentially you might want to jump on messaging you might want to see what the general feedback is on for example an Xbox conference like last week and you can see what the general community is saying that may steer your direction with your titles going forward. Uh, it's a great place to test your ideas so you'll see a lot of screenshot Saturday stuff on Twitter. Typically game developers will share work in progress footage of prototypes and they may get a steer from the community the reception of to whether that's popular or not. Advertising is affordable I've mentioned about it being mostly free but the advertising is quite cheap. Facebook and Instagram um, in particular, a very, very cost effective cost of clicks. We're seeing good things from TikTok and Reddit as well for specific titles and different pushes, but ultimately it's pretty effective and pretty cheap. And it can be really fun. So you, you get to have a lot of fun with your community. If you're in a Discord, for example, you know, you can talk directly to them. You can set up events. It's great for multiplayer titles. You can match make with people. Social media is really, really fun. As of anything, there's also downsides. So with social media, one of the biggest ones is that people follow people. As a company, it's very, very difficult to gain traction if you're just talking like a faceless entity. So that's why things like Wendy's have built up a very, very strong personality. So although they don't have a face as such, a very big organization, they do have a very clear tone of voice. They also do some really wacky stuff and have a lot of fun with their channels. But as a smaller company led by people, the humanization job that we talked about before is really, really important. It's very time consuming. So, you know, it's not necessarily something you would want to run on your own. It's very difficult for smaller indies to manage this on top of game development. So it's important to think about your resources when you're looking at your social media strategy going forward. It will not be an instant hit. Social media takes time to grow. You may have, a, you know, an initial glut of followers, um, However, it does take a long time and you're not always going to have positive numbers month on month. You have to keep your followers engaged with exciting and interesting content. And that's a creative job. It's, it's hard. So make sure that you're uh, very, very clear about what resources you're allocating when you go into using social media for business. It can be hard to measure. Obviously, retweets and likes and 
uh, a thumbs up and all the other things that you can get from social media uh, upvotes on Reddit, for example, they're great to see. But, you know, measuring social media traction is more than just those metrics. It's looking at engagement. Uh, it's looking at what your click through rates might be, for example, if you're trying to push people through to Steam, to Wishlist. You can measure social media in so many different ways. And it's important that when you're measuring, you uh, look at your wider, broader marketing strategy and make sure that any KPIs you measure match with your marketing KPIs. Um, also, we've already mentioned it, but some of them do require spend to grow. And that does include Instagram and Facebook uh, as, as very big examples of that. I've already mentioned that social media can be the last point of call uh, for people looking to purchase your product, or it can also be the first place that people look to kind of sanity check your company and make sure that your values align with theirs. Um, but you'll see some of the research here that shows that 50% of 16 to 24 year olds and 46% of 25 to 34 year olds research products online via social networks before they make a purchasing decision. This is really important to keep in mind because ultimately you need to think about who your audience is. Obviously, I'm I'm focusing in on the the gamer demographic which is 18 to 34 um, however you know there's some really interesting research online to show that it, it is the same case across all demographics so first you need to make sure you get a base understanding of your audience so working out exactly who the audience of your products or your company are and um, where do they exist so for example if you're really looking for multiplayer fans potentially they're watching twitch they're watching people playing uh, overwatch for example uh, what motivates your audience? Are they interested in the competition of a game? Do they like a story? Are they looking for something to fill some spare time? Ultimately, working out what their motivations are will again help you identify exactly where they exist online. So the last one is also looking at what your competition is doing. So if you, for example, have an idle mobile game, absolutely look on the store, uh, on the app stores and see which games are trending and then go and have a look at their social media channels. They may or may not be good at it. <laughs> not everyone is. However, it will give you a good steer on what their traction looks like and what their social posts look like. And you can use that to craft your own messages or at least inform how you craft your own messages going forward. Okay, so now we've established that you need to look at your audience and understand where they exist. It's good to look at the different types of social media, what they do and how they could potentially work for your game. So let's start off with social networks. Uh, the name's pretty obvious here, but ultimately you're looking at platforms that allow people to connect to each other and, and brands, um, uh, help people organize and share ideas, create events, share information. They're extremely fast moving. Twitter in particular, a tweet lasts 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so they move extremely fast and typically content becomes viral within an hour of it going live. It's excellent for recruitment. So if you're looking for new staff or potentially you're recruiting for a beta, it doesn't necessarily have to be a job. It's a great way to find new people within a network and pass a message along very, very fast. Ultimately for games, Twitter is one of the biggest platforms, although it's highly used by game developers. Um, Facebook is really great, but again, it's quite an expensive platform to grow on and LinkedIn is absolutely about business first. So sharing your wins, talking about business achievements, uh, recruiting staff, um, trying to push out any bigger messages you have about your company would happen on LinkedIn. But Twitter is a great place to kind of show and test content because it doesn't last very long. So the screenshot Saturdays, the Indie Wishlist Wednesdays, there's plenty of hashtags and themes that you can jump on, which allow you uh, to show work in progress, game footage, to test new ideas, to test gifts. I think it was my, my friend Pedro, which is Devolver's recent release. That game was on Twitter for about five years, testing GIFs. <laughs> um, that's how they got such a huge following and ultimately found such a big publisher. So testing new content on these very fast moving platforms are a great way to, to play with your ideas and uh, get a litmus test for how, how it's being responded uh, in a way that disappears extremely fast. Next, we'll look at the media sharing platforms. These are platforms with a primary function to entertain. So we're looking at Twitch, TikTok, YouTube, etc. They're defined by video content. So typically they're very much led by video. Obviously things like Facebook and Instagram stories have started to encroach into this area as well. Their primary function is to keep 
users engaged for as long as possible because their business model is based off of advertising around the content that people are watching. So um, video is a primary form of communication, uh, text is secondary on all of these platforms. They require a huge amount of curation and the content creation side of it is very intensive because it's all about high quality content. The curation aspect in particular for something like Instagram is really intensive because if the feed looks inconsistent and poor, you almost treat it like an art gallery people are less likely to follow. So it's incredibly hard to grow these channels. The opportunities for influencer partnerships, huge. Obviously we talk about Twitch streamers and YouTubers in gaming specifically, because that's one of the biggest categories uh, on both of those platforms. Obviously get Twitch was made for gaming. So influencer partnerships are really, really valuable in here. So if you have a highly engaging platform, you're more likely to attract them to come to you because they want to take a piece of your audience. Um, but that, that's really beneficial for both sides. It is the most time consuming of all the social media platforms, but they can be the highest rewards. And I'll show some examples of that shortly. Discussion forums. So looking at Discord and Reddit specifically for games, because they're probably the two most engaged. The whole idea of these platforms is to discuss news and information and opinions, very opinionated. Um, they're typically, especially in the cases of Discord and Reddit, extremely siloed into different interests. So Discord, you have individual servers for different companies or titles. And Reddit, obviously you have subreddits for different interests. Um, and that means that you can dive really deep into these tribal groups and they're a great resource for market research going forward. So you can, for example, say you're releasing a sailing game um, you can go into all the sailing subreddits and get a real feel for who that customer is, what age demographic they are, what secondary interests they have, what attracts them to the hobby of sailing and how that could translate to your video game. Reddit specifically is, is a lot more hostile to advertising. So if you advertise on there, it can be quite successful, but expect a lot of negative comments underneath your ad, <laughs> which never feels good. Um, these platforms can be some of the biggest evangelists for your title, Discord in particular, because you can own it wholesale. No one else can enter it unless you give them an invite. You can create a really exclusive place for people to talk directly to developers. It's used a lot for Kickstarter rewards for that, where you share work in progress development. Um, you can also use Discord to create matchmaking servers and chat servers for multiplayer titles. So it can be an extremely important platform for the base of your community if you're uh, running an online community. And I've got an example of that shortly. Um, so these platforms are very, very, very hard to break into. So if, for example, you are wanting to get involved in the speedrunning community, there's some great credits for that. However, if you're not a speedrunner, you don't know how to talk their language, it can be hard to break in. So a lot of time needs to be put into research on these platforms. And Discord's intensive because people really want to talk directly to you as a developer. So with these two in particular, you need to really think about your resource and time management. And lastly, I'm looking at the blogging platforms. So for games, I've picked Tumblr and Medium specifically because they're the easiest platforms to use. You can also use WordPress if it's embedded on your own website. There's also the Gama Sutras and the IndieDBs of the world where you can host your own blogs. Uh, they're much more specific and very much about the game development side of things. However, um, you know, ultimately the blogging platforms are about sharing longer form written content, uh, typically engaging, uh, encouraging people to comment and share said content because you want to become a thought leader. So for example, you could write a blog piece about a really in-depth piece of code you've written or potentially um, you've done something really innovative with your matchmaking system in your multiplayer game or um, you've created something completely different uh, than any other title that's ever existed and you really want to talk about the thought process the creation process behind that you know ultimately this is where you can long form talk one thing i'd say is that there's some blogging platforms built into sales platforms talking about the steam announcement system itself a lot of steam followers like to see the progress of games especially if you're in early access so you know the blogging platforms can extend into some of the retail platforms as well depending on uh, where you're launching your title obviously you wouldn't post on this daily um but blogs can be a great way to convey something that needs more than uh, a few words or is harder to message in a video so with the different types of social media in mind you need to ask yourself a few questions Firstly, what are you looking to achieve with social media? It's great to measure sales, and obviously everyone wants to sell more, but with social media, it's a longer tail game. And actually, 
you need to look at what your goal is going to be much further in the future. So it could be about reputation. It could be about building a really robust community. You might be releasing a game now, but you may release four or five games in the future. Like, are you going to use these social media platforms to remarket or to potentially cross promote your titles? Um, have have a longer a longer time frame in mind when you're planning out your social media strategy because you're always going to do more than launch one title. Next, you have to look at the resources you have to your disposal. Like I've mentioned before, some of the platforms, for example, the content creation and content sharing platforms require a lot of curation and a lot of content creation. So who can you talk to in your team to run these channels? If you're on your own, how are you gonna fit that in between your development cycle? It's really important that you look at that. Don't just look at the money, look at the time. This is why less is more. It's better to spend a little bit of time curating which channels you work on and releasing better quality content on less platforms than it is to spread yourself too thin. And I say that to big studios too. And what kind of game are you working with? Look at the games that you're releasing. Think about how people engage with the games that you are creating and are trying to put out into the world. How, how are people going to respond to them? What are your key pillars of that title? For example, it might be beautiful. Maybe your game is absolutely stunning. There's no point in just using written blog posts. You can absolutely use them, but not on their own. You need to show some footage. You need to show this, the most important and strongest aspect of your game. So think about where online you need to exist to find the target audience that you want to hit. So now we're gonna look at a few examples. I've deliberately picked a couple of games that have an absolutely different approach, different look, completely different target market. Um, because I think it's important to see what social media mix they're using and, and how they're using it to their advantage. So first is Animal Restaurant. This is an idle mobile game, which I love, <laughs> disclaimer. Um, it's very much coded towards young people and women. It's free to play with microtransactions. Um, it's primary channels are Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Line. Line is the uh, kind of Facebook equivalent for Japan. Um, their content really plays to their strengths. The game is extremely cute. It has this lovely kitsch art style. They've integrated the game itself with Facebook and Line. So when you reach certain milestones, you can share content and uh, it will auto generate hashtags, which is great for exposure. Um, they also share game updates on all of their platforms using really lovely images. And you can see there's a real consistency in, in all the channels. They look the same. They have the same artwork. It's immediately recognizable as Animal Restaurant. Um, and Instagram is their biggest platform. It is absolutely huge. It's got over 100,000 followers. Their cute aesthetic is perfect for the aspirational nature of the platform. As you see, they, they're seeding in these lifestyle images. You see the picture of the cat there. They've also got a picture of food with some illustrations on it. They know that it's a very lifestyle led platform. So they're using that to their advantage. They also know that a lot of women use Facebook um, and Instagram specifically. So this is the reason why um, their focus is on these lifestyle platforms because they know their target audience is there. The second game I want to show you is Last Oasis. So uh, disclaimer, this is one of our consultancy clients. We didn't run their social media. Um, this is a early access MMO, multi so it's massively multiplayer online title, um, PC only on Steam. And uh, their primary social channels are Discord, Twitter, and Facebook. Now their Discord is one of the biggest Discords I've ever been in with 50,000 plus users. They point all of their other social channels at Discord. So. The Facebook and the Twitter almost exclusively exist to feed people into their Discord's ecosystem. Um, Discord's their primary channel and this adds value to the multiplayer aspects of the title. So there's chat servers where people can um, talk to each other about the game in person, like, you know, voice chat to each other. Um, they can also uh, chat on there while they're playing the game. The developers have put a gamification into the server where they actually give uh, in-game rewards for engaging in the Discord and they give different members different levels of um, seniority within the Discord, which is a meta game. It's really cool. Um, Discord's great because you can program with bots so you can basically make mini games within Discords. It's, it's amazing. They've also created matchmaking systems in there. It allows the players to talk directly to the development team because it's in early access. So many of the features will be work in progress or being rebalanced. So the community can take a really active role within that process of early access. 
Um, and you know, most streamers use Discord to manage their own community. So because it's such a streamer friendly title, this is a wonderful way to get streamers really excited and involved. They can promote their streams going live to 50,000 other people in Discord and potentially people can go and mess with their games. <laughs> um, it's a really smart way of um, funneling your community into one location. You'll see that they haven't put as much effort into their other two channels, but it doesn't matter because they know that their core community exists in Discord. And again, this is the less is more approach. They've chosen one place to run extremely well. Um, and the others are there to, to be a communication portal. They're not poor by any standards. They're just um, a lot less detailed than their Discord. The last title I'm going to look at is Shotgun Farmers. It's a funny PC indie game with a really young target audience. Its primary channels are TikTok, Twitter and YouTube. As you can see, it's very, very popular on TikTok. It is currently leading the indie game tag on there. If you're interested in TikTok as a platform for games, absolutely take a look at what these guys are doing. Um, comedy is one of the key pillars of the game, and it's also one of the largest categories of content on TikTok. Also, you know, comedy is extremely entertaining, and we have already established that these um, media sharing platforms uh, are really all about entertainment and keeping people engaged. So, you know, comedy content is perfect for TikTok specifically. The childish graphics also make it really appealing to a younger audience, which is a you know the, the biggest consumers of this type of media. And uh, FOMO is really powerful. If someone's having fun with something, you want to get involved in that. So it's a really, really powerful motivator for people to go and buy the game and potentially play it themselves. Um, all of their social media uses content from TikTok. So the content's their primary, uh, TikTok's their primary content driver, and then they rehash it for their other platforms. So you might be able to see it on some of the screenshots there, but they've actually created compilations of their own TikToks for YouTube. They also embed them on uh, Twitter as well. So they're creating a really high level of content for one platform and then repurposing it for others to um, you know, make the most of this content they're creating. But also they know that it's appealing. They've tested it on TikTok, so they know that it's going to be it's going to work in other media sharing platforms such as YouTube, which is a really clever strategy if uh, you're a small team. So to round this short talk off, um, I just want to close off with a couple of thoughts. So I've already mentioned before, less is more. It's better to do one thing really, really well than to stretch yourself extremely thin. As you've seen from some examples, you know, sometimes identifying the one platform that you know will work for your game and then pointing everywhere else at that and putting your effort into that one platform is gonna give you much, much better results uh, than trying to be everywhere all at once. Zone in on what makes your game appealing and which channels will showcase that aspect of your game the best. Be consistent, so regardless of where you choose to post, make sure your brand voice and your look and feel are consistent and recognizable. So. If, for example, you're posting on Instagram, make sure that it isn't a complete departure from what you're posting in other places, because otherwise people will visit and it won't feel like the same company or the same product. Definitely tailor it depending on which platform you're on, but you really want to make sure that your brand essence is extended across the different platforms you're on. So people know it's you and they understand who you are. Um, you're not necessarily going to get everyone following you on multiple platforms. Like people will follow you on Twitter who may not follow you on Facebook. However, if they come across your content, you still want them to be able to feel like it's something that they're interested in. So consistency is really important. So I just want to round off this talk with a thank you for listening. Um, if you have any further questions, my contact information is here. And you can also reach me on LinkedIn if you just want to connect. Thank you very much. Bye.